Welcome to episode number 4 in the UE5 vehicle tutorial series. In this episode, we will create skid marks. Let me show you what they look like. That's about it. You can see from the front wheels here, they fade in and out. Now the old ones were just black squares. They look pretty bad. These are, I think, pretty nice. So I'll be showing you how to make these right away. In order to do these, you'll need a couple of things. We have to import the texture first. Skid T, I uh, made that in Photoshop. I'll show you what it looks like. It's really just three patches. They have to be smooth all around to look good, I think. And also, they should not touch the sides of your picture. That's what you. Uh, that's where you get the smooth in effect. Once you got your texture, you need to make a material for it. Let's name it skid mark, I guess. That has to be a translucent material. You'll be dragging your texture into it. You'll use that as a, an opacity mask. You might actually multiply it just to be able to control the opacity. I believe the one I did earlier was multiplied with 0 0.75. Let's put that back in just so it looks good. And as for as the base color, you will need a vector 3 constant. Constant free vector, that's the one. Let's not make it completely black. Let's make it just a very dark gray. See how that looks. My computer is freezing up so bad since I started to record. I don't know why. Okay, now you have a material you can use. Let us create a particle emitter for it. Now I use the Cascade Particle System instead of the Niagara because I really don't know how to use that. So let's use the good old one. It'll be good enough for skid marks. I believe that's just one end. Now if we open that, you can see there's quite a bit of stuff in here we're going to delete. Color over life and initial velocity are not needed. Somewhere in there, we need to set our material. That's going to be skid. I got two of them because I obviously have one already done for test purposes. The one we just created is skid mark. That's it for the required. Screen alignment here looks better if you use PSA velocity. And uh, this is it. Now if you go into the spawn section. Now instead of constant, I like to use uniform. Again, 20 to 100 are values I tested and found worked best. Because if you don't spawn enough, they'll be stretching out a lot. So the longer your drift is, the more you're going to lose your skid marks. And when you don't drift a lot, you don't want to spawn too much because they're going to overlap each other and make those black lines. So I found that 20 and 100 to be the best values. As for lifetime, I set mine to 15 seconds. Again, you can put that into a constant instead of a uniform because they're all going to fade away at the same speed. So 15 seconds is good for me. You can set that to whatever you want. Initial size again 
we want a constant because they're all the same sizes and for the size of my tires it has to be 15 by 15 and that should be it now you can test that by placing it in the map and moving it around and obviously because I'm recording this it isn't working <laughs> let me actually open up the other one and see what I did wrong oh of course yeah that's a ribbon you need a ribbon data <laughs> now that is going to be type data ribbon data right here sheet for trails again pretty specific values I don't remember from the top of my head let's copy and paste them for the other one sheet per trails I set to 100 max trail I like to set 10 because you're gonna get four because you got four wheels and again you can set that to anything you want but I set it to 5000 seems to be enough the render axis should be source up so they render properly and I find that picking that tangent recalculation makes them look a lot better now you can set that to one as well and now that should be working let's try that again probably delete that one that is my old one now you can see we're placing skid marks for some reason I could never get it to look good from the top always had to uh, set the X rotation to 90 degree or is it minus 90 <laughs> Actually, they're right there. So now we've got our emitter. We will need a physical material to apply to the road so that we know when the wheels are touching the road. So we don't spawn that drift decal when they're in the air or onto the grass. So again, just uh, if I can find where that is in the menus. They, they changed every names in UE5. I can't find anything anymore. Obviously physics, physical material. You will create a new one. Nothing to it. Just name it whatever you want. Don't change any values in it. I'll delete that because I've got one already my road material I'm using is that one if you double click on it that's actually an instance from this material sorry about that now that one here into the left when you've selected your uh, master material going to the left you can set your physic material right here let's close up a few tabs so with that done, we're ready to start the blueprint. Let's go back into our Porsche tutorial. That is where we left it last time. Now we'll be needing to create four particle emitter components. The way I did it before was I actually spawned those decals at runtime whenever I needed them, but that actually caused them to be always lagging behind the car. Because if you haven't tried to uh, make a line trace from a moving vehicle, you'll find it's always lagging behind. Because by the time it's done calculating the position of the vehicle, well, the vehicle already isn't there anymore because of physics. So the way to fix that is to use components instead. 
particle system because we're not using the uh, Niagara. I like to name these the same name as the wheels and place them in the same order outside of the wheels. Just make this easier. So front right, front left, wheel left. Before that, we've got settings to change. We'll set the settings just one. Auto activate, we need to disable because we're going to activate these only when we're drifting. Then we need to set the template form to our skid emitter we just created. And we can name that one. I believe it was front right that was first. It's such a bad short term memory. I will duplicate that. Okay, these are actually the other way around. Okay, now we need to place these properly. Let's go into the top view. Okay, that camera does not move the way it does in Blender. That was weird. <laughs> right. No need to be super accurate with these. They'll be under the tires. Nobody can tell if they spawn just a little offset. Let's go into the left view. Actually lift these. Now the suspension length on that car is just 3 centimeters long, it's barely any suspension at all. So I'll just lift them up 3 centimeters to make sure when that suspension compresses, these emitters don't find themselves under the ground. If you have a super long suspension, you'll need to tweak the code a little bit to have these move up and down with the, the length of the suspension. I'll show you that a bit later. But we're, we're not going to need that for this car, so let's not overcomplicate the code. Now with that done, we need to create a new function for Drift Detect. Before I forget about it, let's put that function on there. Now the first thing we need to do is get the wheel data. We'll be using our variable here, vehicle component, we've created in the last video. We're going to get the wheels from that. Get wheels and create a for each loop. So if you got eight wheels, this is going to happen eight times. If you got four, it's going to only happen four times. And we need to get the wheel state from that vehicle component because that wheel state contains a lot of useful information we need to detect whether or not we're drifting. Now the area index will be the wheel index. We are going to break the result from that. Break wheel status. Now the in contact 
I thought would tell us whether the wheel is on the ground or not, but it's always true, even if the wheel is off the ground, so we can't use that. I guess the Chaos vehicle is still a work in progress. There's a few things in there we can't be using. And here is the complicated part. First thing I will start doing is to grab all these, drag them into the blueprint, and create a select node. Add a couple pins to it. We need four. And in the index, we'll use the array index. So each wheel has its own emitter component, which is why I think it's pretty important you put them in the same order, just so it's easier to do that. Okay. Now, first thing we need to do is figure out is that wheel on the ground? So we'll be detecting which physical material we're onto. If the wheel is in the air, that will return no physical material. Oh, come on. Why is there so many? Let's select the one we did in the content browser right here. Open your blueprint. And use the one selected. There you go. Now we, we need that to be the same and a couple other things. Let's already plug that into a branch before we get too far. Now we need two things, skid magnitude, slip magnitude and skip magnitude, just to detect how much skid and slip we're getting. I'll be using the nearly equal node for the float to turn this into a boolean. And I do not want it to be nearly equal to zero. Do the same thing here for the skid. Add a new pin. Actually, no, that's that's not. It has to be one or the other. Because you can be slipping and not skidding, or the other way around. Now you'll find that skid magnitude gives you a value anywhere from 100 to 1000. So your error tolerance here from testing is best to be set at 250. While your slip here can be as low as you want it. So I like to put 0 0.1. So that will tell you that your wheel is in contact with the road and it's either slipping or skidding. We know which wheel will affect which emitter. So from that branch, we need we need to know whether that emitter is already active or not. Let's lower that a bit. I like to make straight lines in my blueprints. Please don't hate me. <laughs> put that into false. Now if that returns false, meaning we're either not drifting or not on the ground, we need to grab that emitter here and deactivate it. So we don't leave skid marks anymore. We don't need to call that if it's 
not already active so let's not as for here we're actually gonna want to activate the skid mark emitter if we're returning true now we can't have the uh, is active check on the true because when you start leaving skid marks the old emitter stays active so the old skid marks don't disappear so if we if we do that check we're not getting any skid marks and that is it really now, unless I uh, did something wrong somewhere we should be getting skid marks let's actually remove that one which is one I use for testing off camera let's put the one we just made on the map set it to auto possess auto possess and give it a shot and we got skid marks now you can see I didn't follow my own advice and they're actually sideways <laughs> because I forgot to rotate the emitters to be minus 90 actually no 90 degrees select all four of them go into the rotation x-axis and set 90 degrees <laughs> and here they are looking good that's it now next video should be animating those calipers the steering wheel the needles and the speed ga gauges probably the pedals and shifter as well even the doors and then really we should be jumping into sounds we need engine sounds to uh, get a good feel for that car so again thanks for watching let me know what you thought in the comment sections and I will be seeing you next time